Shrimp farmers have destroyed an estimated 38% of the world's mangroves to create shrimp ponds, and the damage is permanent. Five square miles of cleared mangrove forest produces only two pounds of shrimp per day. The land is depleted in just 10 years and then unusable for another 40. Landscare Singapore is active in the vertical farming of vegetables, and now another type of farming has gone vertical. Universal Aquaculture is looking to clean up the shrimping business with its modular vertical farming solution. Jeremy, how does the universal aquaculture system of vertical farming differentiate from the traditional prawn farming model? I think that the traditional farming model, it's, um, if you look at it, it hasn't really changed much in the last century. Um, the way water is treated, the way the prawns are grown, uh, we had to totally reinvent the wheel when it comes to a vertical farm like ours or a very automated farm like ours. What we have is a system where we can grow prawns far away from the seas. The nuances of farming are great. There are, there are so many different aspects of farming. In the facility we have, we have our own mother and father prawns. Uh, we hatch our own babies. We grow them to the juvenile size before we put them into our grow-out area. And these are all in big controlled tanks with totally controlled environments, yes. right? Where you can really limit the exposure to disease or anything else, parasites and everything. Yes, yes, yes. In 1,000 square meters, we've got 296 tanks. And the reason why, the reason we do that is because we want to be able to control the body of water extremely well. Okay. If, if you look at our facility, uh, from the area where the mother and mother father prawns are, the way we treat the water there is different from our nursery which is also different from the area where the prawns grow out in. By and large, what we have done is we've managed to control the cost very well. So we are able to produce prawns at a price today that we can go to market with and be comparable to the prawns that are farmed in a traditional farm and shipped all the way across to us in Singapore. So Jeremy, with all that said, what do you think uh, governments could do to incentivize the rollout of vertical farming and aquaculture versus the traditional model that's doing so much environmental damage. Governments could help us with, uh, like in, in the case of Singapore, um, the beautiful thing is that if they've set aside land specifically for, for farming and aquaculture, the land comes at a real decent price. I see. Likewise, I think I've seen this happening in, in certain cities in America, certain cities in the UK, certain cities in Europe, where the government says that, okay, I think we need to bring our production of food closer to our population centers. And, and there has to, been- To reduce an, that transportation cost. Yeah, and, and, and also- And time. And time, and, and also for food security reasons. Why do you think that certain governments and in certain countries have been slow to adopt vertical farming? Uh, to answer your question, why um, the vertical Aquaculture farms are not so popular yet. It's because of technical challenges. The pumps, you have to run the pumps, the aeration systems, and these technical challenges only happen once you start to build a farm that is big, like what we have done. I see, when you start to go to scale, when you, start to go to scale you start to run into these technical problems. There's a technical problem of like, how do you take care of 296 individual tanks in such a closed space? With the manpower requirements, how do you automate that part of it? How do you check it? How do you, how do you, how do you look at the sensors, and um, how do you use the sensors in a way that is economical? And there's also uh, an element of uh, call it humane treatment of animals yeah, in right. your approach versus traditional farms. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? So, like in a, a lot of the commercial hatcheries, for instance, and this this might come as a surprise for a lot of people, right? Um, so, when you have a mating pair of prawns, to encourage the female to start spawning eggs, right? They ablate one of the eyes. So that is a process that we do not do because we only need to hatch enough prawns to keep our facility running. They breed in nature. Uh, the, 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 the female prawn will have anything between 150,000 to 250,000 eggs. Okay. Uh, but when they, when they shed those eggs after they're fertilized in, in the wild, maybe a couple of thousand survive. But in, in our facility, because it's so controlled, um, we have 150,000 babies every time. <laughs>